everyone. Welcome in to the Colorworks Design House. I'm Linda and Mr. Carl Colorworks is over at the control station. We are Colorworks Designs and thank you so much for joining us today on this fab Friday. And that's right, it is. <laughs> Fab Friday. Thank you everybody for joining us. It is Friday, June 12th here at the Colorworks Design House. It's a beautiful, beautiful day in Palm Desert. We're broadcasting live from Palm Desert, California, and it's about 88 degrees out there. You'll also see that we're using Ecamm Live down there, the little logo. Uh, we're beta testing this streaming platform out, so we're using that today. We want you to like and share this video with everybody you know. Even if you're tuning in after the broadcast and not live with us, please like and share so we can share our thoughts and everybody else's comments with everybody. If you didn't know also, we have a Colorworks YouTube channel that you can subscribe to and we'd really appreciate you hopping over there sometime and subscribing to us so you'll get a little alert whenever we post a new video tutorial about sewing tips and tricks. Um, and today on the broadcast, we're gonna be talking about uh, ways of setting your machine up for sewing success. We'll do that later on, but I want you to stay tuned for that as well. Uh, let's see who's checking in. Carl, who's checking in today? Candy Holtzman. Hello, Candy. Thank you so much for joining us. Connie. And Connie, is that Connie Lindstrom? Yes. Connie, hello. And Nancy. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us. Just go ahead and leave a comment if you're just joining us. We'd like to see from everybody Barbara. what's going on. And I guess we have Barbara going. Good yes. morning, Barbara. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, let's switch over to the cactus cam and see what's going on out there. As you know, Golfers. we do live on a golf course. And so this is our view from the Colorworks Design Studio. I think we have some golfers out there playing. Uh, but like it's a beautiful day, not too hot, about 88 degrees here in Palm Desert. Um, I also wanted to mention that we've added gift cards now to our Colorworks shop. So if you go to colorworks.com and um, you want to get a gift for a friend, you can buy a Colorworks gift card. Um, and speaking of that, we're going to go right in and announce that last week's winner. So just so you know, each week on the broadcast, we ask a question at the end of the broadcast. And uh, when you answer the question, you're entered into uh, the contest uh, with the random thingamizer that we choose based on your comments. Um, for a $10 Colorworks gift card. And so we started this last week on last week's broadcast. And of all the people who answered our question, which was, what was your favorite pattern? We have chosen a winner. And Carl, who is that? Let's go for it. Congratulations, Connie Lindstrom. You are last week's winner for a $10 Colorworks gift card. We'll be contacting you to let you know how you can get that. Um, usually it's through email. Um, so you can either contact us or we'll come find you to get you that gift card. Um, so let me just check out my notes here. So I wanna jump right in and talk about the pattern of the week. The pattern of the week is Modfish. Okay, and the reason I'm calling this the pattern of the week is because we did a Colorworks Quilt Along uh, about four weeks ago where we did wonky piecing, and it was the wonky piecing Quilt Along, and lots of people are now finishing up their mod fish, including me, so I wanna show you some of mine here. So this is just a smaller wall hanging here that you can make from the pattern, and we'll have them swim the right way off the screen. Woo! And another one. And is that I, a school of fish? Now? It's a school of fish, I guess. The larger fish sample that you see on the pattern cover is traveling around the country right now in other trunk shows. But I did want to give a shout out to our friends at the American Quilting Society. Um, AQS, yes, has kitted this um, pattern. So if you like what you see on the pattern cover, I encourage you all to jump over to shopaqs.com or aqs.com to grab uh, the uh, Mod Fish fabric kit that they are now selling. I think they have a limited supply. So if you do like what you see on the pattern cover, go ahead and jump over to our friends at AQS and get yourself a fabric kit while they have them in stock. Um, the other uh, quilt along we just finished, which was uh, Mod TV. So if you aren't, uh, if you're new to our broadcast and you don't know about our Facebook group called Colorworks, 
quilt alongs within that Facebook group. We do quilt alongs. We share tips and tricks. Customers can post progress pictures, ask questions, um, share fabric, get thoughts from each other. And so we just finished doing the mod TV. And so this is my mod TV that I did during the quilt along. It was a four week quilt along. And I might add that you can access all of these uh, posts, uh, blog posts and tutorials. We do a companion video tutorial to each blog post that goes with the quilt along. Those are on our website under the quilt along tab, but you can also join the Colorworks Quilt Along Facebook page and join in on the fun. And we'll be starting a new quilt along uh, probably in another week and a half. And also the group helps me choose what our next quilt along should be. So this is another mod TV. I'm going to show you some samples here. And I love to use like my serpentine stitch. I don't know if you can see that uh, to kind of decorate the mod TV. When I do a singular block like this, it looks like radio waves. So that's the number four stitch on the Bernina machine. But a lot of machines actually have this stitch um, already programmed in. But if you have a Bernina, it's stitch number four. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. Nice to have you here. And so here's another mod TV block that I did and shows you a little example of how you can fussy cut a fabric out. So this was just some quilting fabric I had and you can fussy cut out something for the screen. You can use a stripe to make it look like we're uh, in static mode on the TV. And that one, I just did some straight line quilting a quarter inch apart, you know, and then our favorite thing, you can put a piece of photo fabric in there and that's our little dog, Molly. She's past the Rainbow Bridge, but we keep her memorialized here at all times. She was our office manager. So there's Molly all memorialized on photo fabric in a mod TV block. Um, and we'll show some other customer quilts if Carl's got that set up. So this is one that I did for Jenny Doan. And we want to wish Jenny a happy birthday over there at the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Uh, we visited them last year during the Missouri Star Quilt Academy and we taught for them. And so um, one of the things I taught was slash and sew quilting. And I presented this block to, to Jenny as a present to her. Um, and then we have Donna. Donna was in our quilt along. That's on the right hand side of the screen there. Uh, Donna's uh, blue mod TV, back, blue background mod TV. She did fussy cuts with cats, which came out super cute. And then we have Barbara. Barbara's got her mod TV there with a Wizard of Oz fabric. Um, so you can just, you know, go to town and use your licensed fabric there and show off uh, all your creativity there. Um, so if there's any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I don't know if we do, Carl, any any questions no, coming in? Just saying no, hi. hello, everybody. I'm just loving everybody showing up. Thank you so much. So let's talk about setting your machine up for success. That's our demo today. A lot of what you're going to see in the little video I've prepared is pretty elementary, but I'm going to share some other things after the video too. But this is something, when you look at this video, this is something that I do every time I start a new project. So we'll hit the video and then I'll move over to the cutting board. There we go. Okay, I should be back. Hopefully everybody can hear me. So I want to show you some of these things up close here in the camera. I'm on the overhead camera in, on our cutting board. These are the two needles that I use all the time. A lot of people, this is my most often qu asked question in classes, is what needles do you use for applique? What needles do you use for piecing? These are the two needles that I use the most. So this pink a package here is Schmetz quilting needles. It's a super sharp point and the sizes range from like a 75 slash 11 to a 90 14. 
And I usually use the 7511 more often than not when I'm piecing. Um, the Microtex 9014 is my go-to needle for machine quilting. So when I'm free motion machine quilting, when I'm appliquing, um, I love this Microtex 9014 needle because I can change threads easily. I can use different weights of thread easily and I don't have to change my needle. So those are the two needles that I absolutely love. And I really don't buy anything other than these two packages of needles. So that's the first thing. Schmetz also, I think, still has this handy guide. So this is something you can either get from your local quilt shop if they have it in stock, or you might actually ask Schmetz if they still produce this, but they do have it as a PDF. And what I love about this is this is the go-to guide on machine needles. So this is everything you need to know and more about machine needles from the Schmetz company. And it's super handy. And there are more different types of machine needles than you probably even realize. Um, it's, it's mind boggling actually, how many different types of machine needles. And each one has a different point to them, a different head, a different shaft, and they all do different things. So this is just a handy little book from the Schmetz company that you can actually download, I think, on their uh, website. And it is Schmetz, I'll spell it S-C-H-M-E-T-Z dot com. So Schmetz dot com, go check it out. They have a load of information there. The other thing I get asked is what's a single hole stitch plate? Here it is. So this is the one from my Bernina machine. And I hope you can see that. It just has a single hole right here. Let me get my purple thing. So right there. So see that? And so what that does is when you get a single hole stitch plate for your sewing machine, um, and you'll go to your machine dealer to get this. This is for my Bernina. But when you get one of these, what happens is the needle is forced to stay straight, perfectly straight up and down going through that single hole when you're piecing. So um, a lot of times people wanna know why their quarter inch seam is off or why their threads get eaten up below their stitch plate. The, one of the reasons why is because when you use your regular stitch plate, it's got a rectangular opening there. And this single hole stitch plate does not allow the thread to move around or the needle to move around nearly as much as the rectangular opening um, that usually comes with your sewing machine. And so this will create a almost perfect straight stitch immediately when you put this into your machine. So that's a single hole stitch plate. Thread, everybody asked me what thread I use for piecing and for stitching, it's Aurifil of course, but Aurifil has different colored cones. So the orange cone is the 50 weight go-to piecing thread. And I usually use this kind of silvery gray because it will hide um, itself into almost any fabric, meaning I can uh, piece with white, you know, white fabrics or beige fabrics and you won't see this thread color. I can piece with different colored fabrics, you won't see this thread color. I can piece with black fabrics or dark fabrics and you really won't see this thread color showing through. So this is a, like a silvery gray, I believe this one is called, uh, this is number 2600 or 2605 is another great one if you need numbers from Aurifil. But the orange colored cone is what you want to go after for piecing. The other thing is I'm going to show this, this actual presser foot here. So a lot of times, this is one of the bigger mistakes we all make. We go for this one that has the guide on it. Do you all see that? The guide that's on the side. And this is handy. It helps you achieve a quarter inch seam. But a lot of times when we're piecing and we want to do precision piecing, you want to actually be a scant quarter inch. And a scant quarter inch is actually a hair less than a quarter inch. And so what happens with this guide, and this is why I don't always recommend to people to use the guide, is that what happens is we tend to get confident with the guide and we shove our fabric right up against this guide, which actually increases our seam allowance to more than a quarter inch at times. Sometimes it's actually over a quarter inch or over a scant over a quarter inch. So I don't really recommend the guide uh, the guided presser foot for people. I actually prefer to use my regular presser foot, quarter inch presser foot that has no guide. And what I do is if I'm ever in doubt about my uh, quarter inch or scant quarter inch seam, I use this handy little tool here. This is called the Perkins. I don't know if you can see that. Let me know. The Perkins um, perfect piecing seam guide. And this is available at all the quilt shops. It's also available, uh, you know, on Amazon or online shops, I believe as well. 
and it works like a dream and it's the simplest little thing. So if you can see, let me grab my purple thing down here. There's a hole right here. You can actually see where I've hit my needle to and fro on either side of it and it's kind of scratched it up. What you do is you drop your needle into that hole. So this goes underneath your presser foot in your sewing machine. You drop the needle into the hole. I'm just going to demo here. So like pretend I've that's all attached to my sewing machine. So now I've dropped the needle into the hole and I actually drop my presser foot, grabbing the one with the guide, and I drop the presser foot down onto this ruler. And that line that's running from here to here, this line, if you see it, is the scant quarter inch. So what this does immediately, when I drop my presser foot on my machine, of course, attached to my machine, onto this little handy guide, if you can see, let me get it in focus, if I'm actually lined up, I'm actually not even touching the guide of this presser foot. I'm actually almost a, an eighth of an inch or less, slightly to the left of the guide. And so what this does is it shows your eye where you need to line up your fabric in order to achieve the scant quarter inch, which actually helps you do better piecing because we all want to be exact with our piecing. So I would highly recommend Perkins Perfect Piecing Seam Guide available at all your local quilt shops. This is the handiest little thing if you're needing help with your quarter inch seam and you kind of have exhausted all those other efforts of changing your thread to a 50 weight, uh, making sure you've got a good quarter inch presser foot, and there's the autofocus, and also getting your needle switched out. This is oops, the best thing. Sorry, me moving in the autofocus. There we go. So ask me your questions in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll switch over to the cactus cam now while I go back to where I'm supposed to be. Oh, I was muted. Let's see. I guess nothing's going on there at the Cactus Cam. Excitement. So did you enjoy that? Let us know with some thumbs up if you enjoyed that little demo. Uh, let us know if you have any questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer the questions after the broadcast. Um, and if you need to see a close-up, I'll probably post a picture of the, per the Perkins Seam Guide in action uh, up in the comments so you can actually see that in action on my machine. Um, okay. Any comments there, Carl? Not yet. Everybody's just happy Woo! watching. Let's ask the question of the week. So as you know, we give away a $10 gift card at the end of every, uh, at the beginning of every broadcast for the next week. So here's the question of the week to answer below in the comments. And even if you're joining us after we do live here, you can answer this question because I'm going to keep the comments open until probably, uh, you know, Wednesday or Thursday of next week as we go through this. So here's the question. What's your favorite notion for precision piecing? And it can be anything. You can say, oh gosh, my favorite notion is my sewing machine, my thread, my presser foot, uh, my purple thing. And that's actually the name of that little purple device I was using, which is another handy notion, the purple thing. Um, so let us know what's your favorite notion for precision piecing and we'll announce next week's winner. Congratulations again to Connie for this week's winner. And please like and share this video. Please go over to our ColorWorks YouTube channel and subscribe. Please share this with favorite friends. Um, Got a question from oh, Catherine. Let's hear the question from Catherine. One moment, let's bring that up. It's a new world here when we stream like this. Do you always use a scant yes. quarter inch? Yes. Do we always use a scant quarter inch? Yes. Scant quarter inch is the name of the game for precision piecing. And so this is the number one thing too. When you start piecing and you say, okay, I've followed all the directions. I've cut my pieces perfectly. Um, and I have pieced them according to directions and I'm still not coming out to what the measurement should be. Let's say the block is supposed to finish at nine and a half by nine and a half and you've cut off your points or you are now at nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. There are several reasons why. The first probably reason is you need to go back and just check your cutting. That's the first thing. Second thing is make sure that you're doing a scant quarter inch. A scant quarter inch is really a hair less than a quarter inch. And that's where the Perkins piecing guide actually helps you. And also backing off of that quarter inch presser foot. The quarter inch presser foots that the sewing machine, I'm going to tell you the, the dirty secret now. The sewing machine uh, dealers who sell 
the uh, quarter inch presser feet. Those are almost full quarter inch presser feet. So if you line up your fabric exactly to the edge of that presser foot, you're gonna find that you're getting a full quarter inch. And the problem happens is that once you do a full quarter inch, that gets compounded as you make the, the quilt block. And so by pressing, your thread, um, your thread size takes up room in your seam allowance. The way you press, pre the way you press takes up uh, uh, space in your seam allowance. And then also by not doing a scant quarter inch, that takes up uh, space in your seam allowance. So yes, the answer is long story, yes. Use a scant quarter inch. And the next question, Carl. Nancy says, I love my wool presser mat. The, fabulous. That is a fabulous uh, notion for getting precision piecing because it actually pushes your fabric flat. So anything else, Carl? No, that seems Okay. So that's it for today's broadcast. We really appreciate you showing up this morning and we appreciate your love, your likes and all that. And we're gonna see you next Friday. Next Friday, I'm gonna talk about my favorite uh, machine applique tips and tricks. So I hope you'll tune in same time next Friday at 10 a.m. right here on the ColorWorks Facebook page. Oh, later. I'm sorry, one more question here. Sewing edge reusable vinyl structural machine is my helpful notion. Great. That sounds like it was an answer to our question of the week. So that will go into the pile. Who was that from? That was from Barbara. Barbara, thank you so much for that. Okay, you guys, we're going to sign off. We're going to see you next week, 10 a.m., right here on the ColorWorks Facebook page. We really appreciate it. Talk to you later. Uh, uh, uh.